everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I'm showing you the ultimate beginner's guide to easy, easy paint pouring. Now, you've probably seen all these amazing videos around YouTube and Instagram and Facebook about how to paint pour, but we're gonna just strip it back to basics and make it super simple. I am using the plaid pre-mix pouring paint, so there's no mediums needed, no extra stuff. You literally just use it straight out the bottle. And there's a couple of different ways you can use it, and I'm gonna be showing you how. So, first of all, I wanna show you um, a clean pour. So you might have heard that term around. Um, we're also gonna do the dirty pour, which is where you put it in the cup, and lots of those have been around. And um, a clean pour is really easy. So you can use something like a colander or a strainer, or you can just take your paint, dribble it on just like this. You see how easy, literally it's pre-mixed. And these colors are not gonna marble together, uh, or mix together, I should say, because they've got this pouring medium in them. So all I do is do this, and then I tip my paint around. So we're gonna just go around our tree slice, tree cookie, whatever you like to call them. And you can always add more paint if you need to. You can see it's just kind of like dripping down on here. Um, and we're just gonna go around until the whole thing is full. And you can see it's not mixing together, it's just creating like these marbles in the paint. So it's really, really simple to do. I like practicing on these tree slices just because they're a nice size so I can try out some different techniques, but at the same time, I'm not wasting huge amounts of paint if you want more color. So maybe I want some more green. I am gonna suggest you wearing gloves and you'll notice I'm working in like a turkey tray. So I get these from Dollar Tree or if you're in England, you can get them in Poundland. And literally it's as simple as, you know, you just throw it away afterwards or, you, you know, reuse them a couple of times and then throw them away. So I'm just moving this around. You can see it's not mixing together. It's just creating these really fun patterns. So. I'm gonna try and move that extra. Now you're gonna to wanna to let it dry for around about 24 hours, I would say, is usually how long I leave mine, or at least overnight if I need to. And you see you get lots of movements. You can do all sorts of fun things. So that's literally the most basic type of paint pouring, is pour the paint on and then rotate your surface around. That's how easy that can be. Now the ones you may have seen everywhere is what we call a dirty pour. So that means you're gonna put the paint in a cup and we're gonna mix it over. Now, you'll notice also that this has a really smooth kind of finish to it, it just all marbles together. Now you can add embellishments to this, which we'll do on another one, um, or you can add something called a cell creator, and that's gonna create those little pockets of color. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, really simple still. Take your color, pour some into a cup. I buy these, these are like the mouthwash cups, again, Dollar, dollar Tree. And then you're gonna take Cell Creator. Now you can either buy bottles of Cell Creator or Cell Magic, something like this, or you can use a silicone um, base, but anything works. And you don't need much, I mean like two drops. That's all I've put in that whole cup is two drops. And what this is gonna do is create those really pretty cells that interact with different colors. And you're gonna mix that Cell Creator in. So that becomes our piece. And I'm not gonna do it with the other colors because I'm just going to leave it as that. So now you want to create your cup. This is your dirty pour. The dirty pour meaning you mix it all together before you put it on there. I mean, you see how simple this is. So I'm gonna start off with some gold and then I'm gonna pour in, and it depends whether you pour down the side. So you can do it like that and kind of get it one-sided or you can just go and go straight in the middle. You see, again, it's still not mixing. And that's gonna give me a different effect. I could put some more gold in. And now I'm gonna put some of my cell created pink in. And all of these little patterns that you're creating, like these little scribbles in here, that's all gonna create really fun texture when we put it on our surface. We're gonna add a smidge more green, just like that. Okay. Now, we get to do the fun part. So you wanna stand up a couple of cups in the bottom of your tray, just like that. And I'm gonna take my surface. This is a wood square from Plaid that they also sent me with this. And you're gonna take this. Now you can do it two ways. You can either pour your cup over, or you can just take it, go upside down like this, wait for your paint to go around. 
just gonna come in a dance. You'll find there's some surface tension, but then we're gonna just let it go. So again, I'm gonna go like this, this, make sure it covers all of those corners. But again, you see how it's just marbled together, but a totally different effect. Now the other thing I could have done, if I grab another tree slice and a cup here, I'm gonna put this one in the corner. I don't know how much paint is left in here, but if I dribble this like so, get all that last paint out, you're again gonna get a different effect because every time you kind of mix the paint around, you get a different effect. And I'm gonna show you in a second how to get all of those little bubbles out, but also add in those extra cells. But I wanna get the messy stuff done first with my gloves on. So this one has a far more marbled effect. I really love this pink and gold in here. But there's lots and lots of movement in the paint, so you just have to be a little bit patient to let it move around. But this one really looks like a gem, like the kind of agates and things like that. So we're gonna go around. I'm just gonna make sure there's some on this side. And of course you can add more paint if you wanted to add more colors in, lots and lots of things. But I just wanna show you how easy it is because I watch all of these super complex tutorials about you know how people do feathered effects and they do it through strainers and they look great, but I just wanna show you an easy way to start. So once you've got the kind of heavy lifting done with your gloves, you're gonna take a heat tool. You can also use something like the uh, butane torches. I'm gonna to start heating it. You can really see in here where these cells are starting to form from that pink. So you see here, but there's also lots of little air bubbles. So just to get rid of those and enhance our cells. So you see now how that pink is popping through. That's because it's got the cell creator in it and it's affecting how our little cells are forming. So you see the more I heat it, the more those cells kind of start to appear and the more it moves my paint around. So you can experiment. You might not want to do that. You can really just kind of play with whatever you want to do. You can also go onto a lower setting and it's not gonna move things around so much. It's just gonna give you the heat. I could do the same on here. You can see right here, these cells appearing from the heat. And again, that's because that cell creator is in there. Whereas if I do that on here, not so much because there's no cell creator for it to react with. Now the other thing, as I mentioned, is you can add in embellishments. I have a whole box here of like mica, gold flakes, uh, glitters, sequins, any of those kinds of things. If you've got any of the Nouveau things, they work great too. And you can add extra splashes in. Um, I'm not sure that I want to add anything into this one because I just really love the effects I've got in here. Now I'm gonna leave these to dry for about 24 hours, as I mentioned, and then I'm gonna add a finisher to them. So you can either Mod Podge over the top, you might wanna shimmer them, you might want to um, do the matte, the smooth, you can really choose the high gloss, the ultra glossy, or you can add a coat of resin over the top and give it a super high sheen or add those embellishments into the resin too. So you can add those embellishments in right now and it will stay there because as the paint dries, it's gonna stay. Or you can add them in on your top layer too. So I hope that easy guide really helped you. Links below for everything I showed you in today's video, of course. Don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell, and of course, give us a thumbs up. And you can join our community as well. But this is the easiest guide to paint pouring you will see here on YouTube. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.